Yeah, very good morning everyone. I am Selva here on behalf of Power Projects. I welcome you all for your uh, session on Ask Selva. This is a first session. Uh, I am mean we can probably I have indicated that what are the questions which you can post related to today that is in the description available in the session which you can post and if there are any other questions other than that area definitely we will take up the question uh, not in this session but in the upcoming sessions so we are going to start uh, in a short while so if you have any questions uh, very well very well you can uh, post the questions so today we are going to focus more for the students and the faculties uh, but that doesn't mean we are going to concentrate on um, industry so our focus will be on the students and of course industry people also can be students always right if you want to develop your skills right uh, i mean your questions are most welcome uh, you can post your questions we will definitely take up all the questions and either we will address the questions in the chat box or we will address the question in the uh, i mean using my simulation or whatever it is i think i could uh, see couple of questions already so yes i will i will go along the way and uh, take a questions Uh, but uh, rather than uh, means focusing on uh, uh, questions let me thought of adding a value let me thought of adding a value uh, by means of giving some technical information at the beginning and then uh, let me go ahead uh, that's what i have planned so that means before i am taking a first question i thought of uh, really adding up some technical information which is really needed for you right so let me take up an eta right so the biggest drawback of the simulation softwares is uh they follow most of the time with a slag bus concept or a swing bus concept which mean whatever may be the mismatch between generation and demand is met by the slag bus or a swing bus or a reference bus whatever you call but that is not always true right if you take an entire india i mean our peak demand might go to 180 gigawatt or 200 gigawatt minimum demand which you can say it fall down to even 80 or 90 gigawatt during this covid so the mismatch between the peak demand and the minimum demand is about almost 100 gigawatt this entire 100 gigawatt mismatch cannot be controlled or adjusted by a single generator because the maximum generator capacity is uh, not beyond 1000 megawatt which is 1 gigawatt so uh, definitely it is uh, impractical to assume slag bus concept or a swing bus concept or a reference bus concept for your load flow analysis so this then we need to ask another question where the swing bus concept is applicable where the slag bus concept is applicable yes the swing bus concept or a slag bus concept is very much applicable where you have a very strong transmission systems which is fed by a uh, i mean sort of say very strong uh, transmission system which is feeding a distribution system so let me take an example where your swing bus works and where your swing bus doesn't work so first let me start with where your swing bus works probably after this information i will i will take up this questions i will take up this questions right okay good so now i am taking a small example somebody has quoted the questions with oltc so i am taking uh, uh, the example so that i can use the same example for the future uh, while answering the question as well so i have taken a, a, a simple system uh, which is an industry which has a demand of say example 10 megawatt i am not modeling the loads in detail i have lumped the entire loads and as i told that industry has a maximum demand of 10 megawatt okay so i am putting uh, the entire uh, demand as 10 megawatt right with a power factor of say example 85 okay otherwise you assume uh, 10 mva at 0.85 power factor okay at 11 kV so that mean what i have assumed now there is an industry i have not modeled the industry in detail uh, i have connected all the loads together and i have modeled it as a lump load as a 10 mv and this is the bus voltage of 11 kv which means that the industry receives the power supply at uh, from the grid at a different high voltage and it is stepping down to 11 kv and 11 kv there may be motors 
and it may be further stepping down to 415 volt and it is feeding loads but i have not modeled all the motors which are connected at uh, industry and i have also not modeled all the lv loads instead what i have done i have means lumped all the loads and i have connected as a single load okay that load is 10 mv at 0.85 power factor that is 8.5 megawatt so then probably the transformer rating i need to check the transformer rating is say example uh, 110 bar 11 kv assume that the industry gets the power supply at uh, 110 kv assume the transformer rating is 20 mva right so i am assuming a typical impedance uh, i mean using a typical impedance in etap is not really right uh, because this uh, typical impedance is used from an old iec 60076 standard so when you are using this typical z and x by r please please refer the recent iec 60076 part uh, 5 standard let me repeat uh, typical z and x by r used in etap comes from the old iec 60076 standard part 5 which is obsolete now and there is a latest IEC 60076. ETAP has not really updated this typical parameters from the latest standard. So if you are engineer and if you are working in power system studies, please don't use a typical Z and X by R which is directly coming from ETAP. Instead, you go and refer IEC 60076.5 and take that values. If you are not deciding these values and of course the purpose of performing uh, load flow, short circuit and motor starting is to identify and Identify the optimal impedance, identify the optimal impedance, right? So that you need to do. But if you are using a typical impedance, please uh, don't start with the typical impedance offered by ETA. Use IEC 60076 latest standard. Fine. With that information, so let me uh, go and straight away jump in and uh, run a load flow analysis. So the maximum demand is 10 MVA. Assume that the minimum demand can go down to, say, example, 2 MVA or 3 MVA. So what I am doing now, I have modeled this as a lump load. And bus 1 is 110 kV, that is 110 kV substation nearby that industry. That 110 kV station might be feeding many other loads and this 110 kV might be interconnected with many other uh, substations. Right? So in this case, I mean, how do we select a swing bus and whether the swing bus concept is, slack bus concept is applicable or not is the question. Answer is yes. So here the slack bus concept or a swing bus concept is perfectly okay. Let me also plot with the units. Yes. Okay. Sing bus concept or a slack bus concept which we have considered here is absolutely okay. Simple reason because now I have gone with the peak demand and if I am changing the demand to say example 10 percentage or a 20 percentage. I have many ways of doing it. I can um, I mean sort of say change the loading category or I can use uh, I mean sort of say a low diversity factor so i'm i'm just giving my load as say uh, 20 percentage of the peak demand right that, that's also possible yes so means i have changed the loading category with the diversity factor so i have used the minimum load as only a 10 percentage of the peak demand which is 10 mva so that is only i am using a 2 mva demand now so in this case also means this gives the results that means the load changes from 2 MVA to 10 MVA doesn't have much impact on this grid, correct? That means this is a bus one which is there, but probably if I change it to the grid or a swing bus, uh, right? Uh, then this is capable of catering whatever may be the mismatch or whatever may be the change in the demand of this industry. Either this industry runs at a minimum demand or whether the industry runs at a maximum demand, this doesn't have much impact on this 110 kV. There may be some small change in the voltage because of the change in load here. Uh, but absolutely this 110 kV station is capable of catering this 10 MVA maximum demand through this 20 MVA transformer because this 110 kV is interconnected with many other substations in the upstream which we have not really modeled it. So in this case, uh, there is a strong transmission system is feeding a small distribution system. In this case, it is perfectly okay. This is perfectly okay to assume this lag bus concept. Right. So now, if we, uh, I mean, so to say, take the same uh, 10 MVA case, take the same 10 MVA case, and uh, I mean, so to say, we assume that that is a islanded system, that is a standalone system without any uh, grid. Okay, we will try to model this. So for that, I will just copy this uh, load. 
let me copy this load and let me take uh, I means for say instead of uh, single generator let me take two generators which are operating in parallel to meet this demand assume that that's a nine hundred system there are two generators which are there connected each of uh, five megawatt each of five megawatt I have taken two numbers of five megawatt generators. I am just trying to uh, means uh, model the same industry. If you have any doubts or clarifications, yes, very well you can post that also in the question box. Uh, this is to just enhance your understanding where the slack bus concept or a swing bus concept is not applicable for a load flow, right? So now again I am uh, going back to the slow flow analysis. Yeah, I am making it none. I have connected the same 10 MVA low. I have two numbers of 5 megawatt generator. I have two numbers of 5 megawatt generator. Right, let me run a load flow. Right, uh, here I uh, mean so to say you cannot see the load flow at all. That's a simple reason because I uh, mean so to say this load flow doesn't work uh, because here we have only one bus. So in each app to run a load flow at least you need two buses. So hope, uh, let me repeat what I have told, that means at least you need uh, two buses for the load uh, flow or a power flow analysis. For only one cross one matrix, the load flow will not solve in ETF, but other simulation software supports one cross one as well. That is only with the one bus you can solve the load flow. Right, so let me take, a, uh, I mean in order to solve this, uh, let me take a small cable. I mean, so I am adding this cable just to, uh, uh, I mean, what do you say, uh, to perform a load flow analysis, which is not possible with a single bus system in ETA. Okay. So I am assuming only 5 meters. Let me take uh, 11 kV single core XLP aluminium cable of uh, 400 square mm cable of uh, maybe 6 runs. I believe that is uh, definitely sufficient to carry this uh, 10 MVA. That is, in fact, more than sufficient, right? 10 MVA, the current is about approximately 500 amps, right? The current is about 524 amps. So, to carry that, I mean, 400 square mm cable is what we are using. So, approximately, if you assume the current density, uh, means even two runs or three runs might be sufficient. It is not really mandatory to go with the six runs. Anyway, so I am running low flow now. Yes, so here also that uh, load flow uh, I means what say doesn't run. So probably you might have understood why it is not running. So here I uh, means what say two generators are connected at bus one, right? Even after if I am adding this cable, the load flow is not connect. I mean it's converging. Simple reason because we are clueless uh, whether to choose. This is an island that is that is perfect. Huh? Okay, right. So let me. Uh, but that's running perfectly. But when it comes to this, it means which generator we need to take it as a swing bus. And when we take that one as a swing bus, what happens to the other? And if I assume one as a swing bus and if other as a voltage control bus, then what is the bus type of bus one? Whether it is a swing bus or a voltage control bus, that's all the confusions what we have. So with that, the reason why uh, means what say we are not able to get the results in ETA. Yes, so here uh, there is an error which is uh, uh, saying you can understand the number of energized bus is less than two. That's a simple reason because uh, means what say here the software asks. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to the check circuit continuity mode, if I'm going to the check circuit continuity mode, means what say saying that there is no slack bus available. Here there is a slack bus available. Okay, so it means you have two options to perform this. You have uh, two options to perform this. One is basically you can go to the uh, option, tools options. In that ETA project, you can allow this voltage control source as a swing source that you can uh, make it true to run this. To run this or probably means what say you can convert any one of this bus any one of this generator has a swing mode here. There are two ways of uh, doing it. 
means I have given both the generators as a voltage control generators. I have connected both the generators as a voltage control generators. So means this bus is saying uh, there is no slack bus. So means now to run the load flow, either you can convert any one of the bus to the swing bus, swing generator, or you have an option in ETA to change. I means what to say the software automatically picks up the voltage control bus as a swing bus. That that option is also available. Yes. So when I'm running load flow, yeah, here you can see the demand is about 8.5 megawatt. Uh, but here you can see, I uh, mean, when the demand is 8.5 megawatt, we generally expect this 8.5 megawatt has to be shared equally. This 8.5 megawatt uh, to be shared equally between these two buses, the two generators, right? I mean, we have two generators, uh, generator one and generator two. So we generally expect the each generator to take equal load of 4.25 megawatt, 4.25 megawatt. But unfortunately, one generator is generating 5,000 kilowatt and other is generating only 3,500 kilowatt. Okay. Let me add on to another uh, story. Like previously, we have done with the uh, 20 percentage uh, uh, factor, right? Uh, diversity factor. I mean, during peak load, I have uh, 10 MBA with 0.85 power factor. But during uh, light load, I have only 2 MBA. So let, let's see how the system responds for a 2 MBA load. That is the minimum demand. Right, I have given 20 percentage. Now, now let's see how, how the system responds. Yes, here is the beauty. So here if you see, I have only a demand of 1700 kilowatt. In this case, what we generally expect, we generally expect two things. One, we expect means either one generator is off and other generator is generating 1700 kilowatt. That's one way of uh, doing looking at. That's a simple reason because of economy of operation rather than, I mean, when the demand is uh, I means less than 50 percentage of one generator then there is no point in running a second generator so you can very well uh, run uh, only one generator feeding the entire demand that means one generator is out of service only one generator is generating and meeting it that's one way of looking at but if you want a hot standby that means for any fault I means still uh, the loads are critical you should not lose the load then you need to run uh, both the generators irrespective of the load if you run uh, two generators irrespective of the load, then still what you expect is, I mean, both the generators to share the load equally, right? But here what's happening, means demand is like 1700 kilowatt, a non-swing bus, that is a voltage control generator, which is I have set as uh, 5000 kilowatt, that is 5 megawatt, is just simply generating 5 megawatt. But I mean, so to say, since demand is only 1700 kilowatt, means this swing bus is consuming 3300 kilowatt it is saying that it is consuming 3300 kilowatt that's not really right right a generator cannot uh, run as a motor and consumes the power so uh, that is technically not a possible solutions but uh, despite of that means the software is giving such a results is because of the software is giving uh, that results uh, simple reason because of uh, the problem of uh, not the software but because of the slack bus concept the slack bus concept what we have applied is applicable for some sources like this right for this systems it is perfectly applicable because whatever may be the mismatch in the demand that can be handled by this grid source in that case assuming this grid source as an infinite source when we are giving uh, the bus as a swing bus basically you can look at what we are doing so it means what is the we are specifying only voltage and angle. We are not giving any limits for real and reactive power, which mean, I mean, P can be from minus infinity to uh, plus infinity and uh, uh, reactive power Q also from minus infinity to plus infinity. That means it can inject infinite real power. It can consume infinite real power. It can inject infinite reactive power. It can consume infinite reactive power. That's what our assumption. That's what our assumption. But that's not really true. Okay, so hope you got it at least. I mean, where to use uh, swing bus or a slack bus concept and where not. Okay, you can use the slack bus concept in a strong transmission system, which is feeding a, a distribution system, but that's not applicable for an islanded systems, especially when the demand is changing. Uh, like uh, your swing bus power will be in the reverse direction, which is nowhere acceptable in the real time scenario. So Dix Island has an opportunity to solve that issue uh, because uh, swing bus uh, means uh, Dix Island has many other options. Like when you are going for a calculation load flow, I mean, uh, it is just not following this swing bus concept. 
in an active power control if you look at as dispatch that is by a reference machine that option is available that is as same as what etap has as a slack bus concept but it has also in other options like by load at reference bus by static generator as a reference bus uh, distributed slack bus slack by loads distributed slack by synchronous generators this is a beautiful option which you can see that means here in etap i mean so to say it doesn't have any options like uh, choose both the generators as a slack bus and uh, start generating equally like even if you argue means what to say if i give both as a slack bus what will happen yes your argument might be right so means what to say now equally they are generating you might be happy that etap is also doing powerful job i am i am not declining it answer is true but in a reality let me add uh, i mean sort of say few more complications where etap fails it is it's important i uh, mean sort of say to understand what's the limitations on the software that is that's most important so i am i'm just trying to put up some other example so previously you thought i means when we made both as a slack bus that's working fine so let let's look at uh, the slightly a different scenario uh, uh definitely the generator cannot be connected to a switch here am i right generator cannot be directly connected to a switch here so what i have done i have connected a cable now i am performing the same load flow with an equal length of the cables probably means if you want to display the cable length yes i can do that that gives you a better understanding of uh, if you take the cables size type and length it's same i not really worry about uh, yeah so here i mean for say 5 meter cable three runs of single core uh, uh, 400 square mm which i have taken when i am running a low flow it is still generating equal power still it is generating equal power we are, we are happy with this but in a reality physically the generators of two generators will not be at the same distance from the 11 kv switch gear say example i am changing the length from say 5 meters to say 25 meters then let me run a load flow what happens you can see there is a huge mismatch right hope uh, the power is visible for you if not let me zoom in yeah i think so what i have done i have not done anything great what i have done i have connected two generators at a common bus and i have just connected a low lump load nothing else but only thing is i mean so to say one generator is connected uh, from the switch gear from a 5 meter but other uh, generator is connected at 25 meters this is quite common in practical reality so now the demand is still 1700 kilowatt this 1700 kilowatt has to be equally shared by these two generators that's what happened when there is equal length of the cables but now the cable length is uh, different so it start generating different power like one generator is generating 1417 kilowatt whereas other generator is generating only 283 kilowatt is it acceptable absolutely no and uh, means what to say if i am going for uh, Um, I mean, so to say, peak demand. Look at the beauty. At least now, uh, I mean, so what is it? It's generating 1,400. It is 175. I am going with 8.5 megawatt. Let's look at the beauty. What happens? Yeah, with the demand of 8.5 megawatt, two generators of 5 megawatt each is there. I mean, with the cable length of 5 meter and 25 meter, one generator is generating 7,083 kilowatt, and other one is generating only 1,417. that means this generator is loaded much beyond its capability and it is generating much less than its capability and we generally expect this 8.5 megawatt has to be shared equally by 4.25 megawatt and 4.25 megawatt by these two generators so uh, uh, then how to solve this problem you have to solve this manually by means of putting one as a swing bus and uh, uh, means what is manually filling the 4.25 megawatt as uh, the power generated by the other generators then still uh, Uh, still you may not be able to get uh, the reactive power uh, balancing so that that's a complicated story so at least you got uh, the application of where the slack bus concept is not applicable here you either need a distributed slack bus concept or you need i mean so to say dispatch algorithm in a different way that's where uh, the excellent comes in so here even in a nas dispatch you can uh, means so to say distribute the powers uh, by a slack generators that means how much percentage etc that's that's possible or you have another beautiful options like secondary control and primary control according to inertia you have multiple options so these are the options which are available in dixelen power factory 
if i take that yes i can take it with some simulation examples but that can uh, takes some considerable time so let's uh, let's take that simulation maybe at the end of the session if i am able to answer all these questions right i need to i told that this is a q and a session you can ask selva and uh, it is not really uh, 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 really uh, not right when i am not answering your questions let me straight away jump to uh, the question of uh, uh, from the first question i am reading out uh, to find out the answers and probably we'll try to i mean sort of say i'm not really promoting the excellent or uh, telling each app is bad i mean each and every software has their own merits and demerits you need to understand uh, means what's the ideology behind each and every simulation software so as a post time engineer that's what i'm trying to say yes so we'll go with the questions how to model sun reactor and series capacitor in eta uh, that's a question from gunashekaran beautiful question sir uh, thanks for joining sun reactor you cannot model it in eta Uh, so there is no options if you look at here uh, sun reactors cannot be modeled here in eta so what you need to model you need to model as a lump load and you have to give a qs uh, value and ps as zero that that's what uh, say example if you want to model uh, say assume uh, 110 kv maybe in reality that may not be there but if i take a 400 kv bus uh, right how to model i am not going to simulate but in a ferranti effect you can see already we have simulated that so means uh, and we have answered this question also i believe uh, how to model a sun reactor eta doesn't allow you to model the sun reactors so means what to say what you can do say typical sun reactor uh, ratings at 400 kv are like 50 mv or 63 mv or 80 mv or 125 mv or something like that so means what to say you can put 50 mv so this with a p equal to 0 and when the load flow doesn't run with a p equal to 0 you can probably give a small value of 0.1 or 0.01 megawatt that is probably you can assume it's a losses in the reactors that that's possible so there is no direct mechanism which is available uh, in eta to model uh, sun reactor so that has to be modeled as a uh, lump load with uh, zero power factor or close to zero power factor right 0.01 power factor something like that you have to model i believe that answers the question uh, guna sir for your sun reactor the series reactor uh, series capacitance is absolutely possible I means you can model series capacitor again series capacitor element is not directly available but there is an option called as impedance in that impedance you can take and here in the rating you have an option x probably means or see you can put it uh, that x in the negative so that is like minus 15 ohms sir so now this is this is a series uh, series capacitance so series capacitance also not directly available in eta but you can use this impedance option and you can model it i believe that that answered your question uh, guna sir if you have further questions still uh, uh, still that's great okay fine if you have further questions you please post it we will, we will definitely take that question okay we go with the second question from sasi i got an opportunity of go through the first session only i like to ask regarding the oltc selection and my question is you simulated no load state of transformer which results of uh, no load loss which results of no loss yeah uh, okay i got an opportunity to go through first session only okay thanks sasi for going through it i like to ask regarding oltc selection and my question is you simulated no load state of a transformer which results of a no loss okay i think if your question is related to something like this if i have understood correctly i mean if i am wrong correct it so even i i will take the same case I mean, let me switch off this load. That is no load case, right? Let me bring this generator in. So let me switch off this generator so on so so that that's not going to cause any misalignments for us. Yes. Now I have. I am repeating the same case. Uh, though whether it is through LTC or without through LTC, I am running a load flow analysis. i am running a load flow without load conditions because the load is uh, means out of service so in this case you are asking are you are expecting a load loss uh, sorry no load loss here if that is a question unfortunately the software eta doesn't account uh, no load loss in simulations that's their modeling capability okay that's not really right but you can very well find out this uh, no load loss using an unbalanced that's that's available here so it means we are not giving any no load test losses here you can very well give this no load loss but even if you give a no load loss that will not reflect in uh, load flow analysis say example if i am giving say 100 kilowatt as a loss right let me put 0.5% uh, percentage and uh, 100 kilowatt as a loss 
Uh, still that 100 kilowatt will up, not appear here the simple reason because uh, I mean that is only applicable for an unbalanced load flow analysis right uh, here it's it's very crystal clear so it means what say in ETAP when you're performing a normal load flow analysis that is not really included that means no load loss of your transformer is not part of your load flow analysis in ETAP that, that's the modeling capability what they have built in okay so it means if you have multiple transformers and if you want to really include your uh, means what is a load loss ETAP doesn't have any option as on today okay so we are using 19.5 that is the version so probably uh, I'm sorry for that it means ETAP 20 version came last week I haven't installed it but when I am going for an off silver session next week I will ensure that I am installing ETAP 20 but in ETAP 20 also the same scenario uh, so if you expect the question is like uh, means where is a uh, no load loss uh, no load loss is not really accounted in ETA, but uh, means if you perform uh, in excellent, you can uh, you can find out the no load loss also in a load flow analysis. That's the advantage of uh, uh, excellent power factor. Fine. And there's a question from Parthiban. In a star star solidly grounded Ranco, what's the reason for LG fault? Uh, Parthiban, thanks for a question. I uh, mean, this is uh, restricted to load flow, so we will have a separate session for a soft circuit. We will take up that question. And there is a question from Naresh. How to calculate manually positive and negative sequence resistance of a transmission line? Yeah, that is uh, quite simple, uh, uh, Naresh Raju. Uh, so you have decided what is the um, material. That is a copper or aluminium or ACS or a triple AC, something like that. And based on the conductor size, uh, like 1450 square mm or like a, a twin zebra or a twin moose, either it is an overhead line or it is a cable. So you have identified what is the size of this. So once you decide the material, the resistivity is known, that is a row. And uh, means what to say, once you find out uh, uh, the size, then you know the area, cross-sectional area, right? Uh, like uh, square mm is available. So then uh, means R equal to rho L by A, that is a simple and straightforward uh, answer. R equal to rho L by A, rho is the resistivity of that material, L is the length and A is the cross-sectional area of that conductor. From there you can find it out. And for a static equipment, your positive sequence is equal to negative sequence. And of course, only one important aspect which you should not miss is like this resistance is uh, depends upon the temperature. So resistance uh, uh, means uh, you need to check at what temperature you are calculating. So if you want to find out uh, like uh, means if you are using a short circuit studies and uh, load flow studies, it has it's just uh, slightly you need to take a note. When you are uh, using a conductor resistance for a load flow, you need to use it at the highest temperature so that the resistance is maximum. So it will result in a higher voltage drop, higher losses, etc. Whereas, uh, if you are uh, uh, means using for a short circuit study, you have to use the resistance uh, at uh, minimum temperature at like 20 degree, so that uh, uh, means what to say your short circuit current will be more. I think uh, that answers your question, Naresh. Uh, and if you have still questions, please please uh, feel free to post it. Okay, there is a question from Srinath. Good morning. Do all the simulation software when it comes to load flow, whether it is balanced or unbalanced, because real time systems are always unbalanced. Is it a valid one? So means what to say, all the software has both balanced load flow and unbalanced load flow option. Now in ETAP, what I'm seeing, this is a balanced load flow. Similarly, you have an option to perform an unbalanced load flow, which is available here. There is an option unbalanced load flow, which we uh, doesn't bought actually. So you can see here what's the capability of us. We don't have purchased this unbalanced load flow, which doesn't mean the software doesn't have the capability. Software has the capability. We have not uh, purchased that license. But if you look at the excellent power factory, the excellent power factory also this uh, option is available like if you go to the load flow you have a uh, balanced positive sequence and unbalanced also is possible so means each and every simulation software most of the simulation software has both uh, means balanced and balanced load flow whether you have that model or not is the only question that that's to be answered right. and there's a question yeah balraman has answered that question okay anyway, thank you balraman for uh, keep answering that question and Srinath, there is another question, if there is any quantifiable measure that can be interpreted from the result of low flow, I hope that would be helpful. Uh, Srinath, you can go back to our uh, videos on the session 1 or you can go through IEEE 399 also. There are about 7 bullet points like uh, find out the voltage profile, to find out the equipment loading, to select the OLTC range, to identify the correct reactive power compensation device and its rating like capacitors and reactors and to find out the total losses 
so uh, to find out the system steady state stability to uh, identify the system operation condition and the emergency condition there are about seven bullet points which is available that is available in IEEE 399 as well as uh, in our most of the videos in our previous uh, sessions so you can very well uh, go through that so whenever answer is already available i am just referring to that uh, so you can very well go through and still if you couldn't find probably definitely this uh, ask silver session is going to continue uh, on every sunday at 10 am so you can very well come back and you can post the questions and you can also i will give you at the end of the day means uh, if you uh, means uh, not available at 10 am you can send your questions to uh, some email ids and means we will address the question and whenever you find a time you can you can watch that and answer it and there is a question from kanagraj yeah thanks kanagraj i think you are following our session uh, rigorously I, i have seen your name quite a lot of time thanks thanks a lot for joining and uh, probably if you could uh, Uh, post your profile background also that helps us to better answer your question yeah like you are a student or a, uh, industry or uh, means where you are working something like that with what's your experience etc thanks kanagraj okay kindly demo dynamic load model in etap as well as the excellent needed for a load flow study okay uh, i mean so what's a load flow is a static analysis so you do whatever you want so means at one instant only we are running a load flow of course there will be changing the load with respect to time but load flow simulates the case for only at one particular instant so means what say there is no point in modeling your load as a dynamic load for a load flow analysis so i uh, means if you uh, have interpreted this as a time domain load flow analysis that is an altogether different scenario uh, means there is something called a time domain load flow analysis where you model a load as a not a single load that is a load which is varying with respect to time like uh, 10 o'clock what is a load 10 5 what is a load 10 10 what is a load etc etc so that is like again a static load flow analysis but it is solving the load flow analysis at each and every time like i uh, means rather than running three cases or a 10 cases it is uh, running uh, based on the time uh, what is a load given so if that is the meaning of it then for that we need a time domain load flow analysis so probably uh, i believe i have answered your question there is no need of modeling uh, dynamic load for a steady state load flow analysis if your question is with respect to time domain load flow analysis then probably you have an option in the loads like you can model a load as a series not as a single load with respect to time that is that is possible like time domain option is there so it's now fixed but you can uh, probably means for say refer an external data that uh, means with respect to time 10 o'clock what is a load 10 5 what is a load etc and probably means your load flow runs with uh, multiple uh, multiple time uh, samples or what the time domain analysis basically analyze the load flow analysis multiple times with respect to the time because the load is continuously changing can i raj uh, i believe that answer your question for a steady state load flow there is no point in modeling a dynamic load a simple reason uh, simple reason because it is it is the uh, means uh, load flow is uh, converging only for one instant okay on that particular moment the load is fixed okay and if your model uh, means if your question is like a dynamic load like a motor then that is model as a constant power load that's the answer so you can very well refer there is some uh, uh, videos in our youtube channel that, that's stating that uh, uh, constant power load constant impedance load uh, i am just referring you the video also uh, if you go back to our channel sorry for uh, so if you go to this video uh, means you might be having quite a lot of uh, videos which we have put on like uh, transmission line modeling uh, so i believe there is a load modeling which is available yeah modeling of loads uh, that that you can refer for modeling the loads yeah that the uh, hope uh, answer your question kanakraj yes yes fine uh, and there is a next question from alexander how is the transformer saturation curve is used in eta uh, uh, alexander means what to say saturation uh, doesn't have any meaning in low flow analysis and uh, so there is no point in talking about the transformer saturation in eta and if your question is more specific to something like a uh, transformer energization or is it a ct saturation if you have a specific question on a specific study please uh, feel free to post it we will we will definitely answer it but to answer your question uh, means what say transformer modeling you don't have any transformer saturation curve so only in the protection you have an ingress option uh, but uh, that's not really have any uh, uh, means what say saturation so uh, means if you be more specific on uh, what is um, uh, what you mean by the saturation of the transformer whether you are talking with respect to the transformer negation or are you talking about with respect to the instrument transformers etc definitely we will answer it 
Right. Okay. Let me move on to the next question. Uh, that means, Alexander, I am not skipping your question. I will take up your question. Probably, if you have uh, more clarity on your question, yes. There is a question from Soyce Quantum I two three three thousand two dot two. It's mentioned that infinite bus should not be modeled with voltage and angle zero to get positive voltage angle for all other load buses. Why? Uh, I am not sure what you mean, uh, Soyce. I two three three thousand two dot two is mentioned that infinite bus, that is a swing bus, should not be modeled with the voltage angle zero. Okay, so I believe uh, means if I modeled it, so this is the point which we are uh, telling. This is the source, right? Okay, fine. So uh, to uh, I means showcase more, I am I am going to edit more. Okay, here you have an option like uh, uh, balanced and unbalanced. If your question is this angle. I mean, so say this angle doesn't have any sense in load analysis. If you change that angle zero to say five degree, all other buses angle will be just shifted by five degree. That's it. It's not going to really make any change. And even probably means when I have plotted, I have not really plotted the angle as well. If you have really looked at it, right? If you want to plot the angle, yes, I can plot the angle also. Right? It's zero degree. And if I'm changing the angle from zero degree to say example five degree, nothing, uh, nothing big changes. Right here, hundred angle zero degree. So if I am changing to uh, zero degree to say five degree or something, uh, means all other buses also will be shifted by a five degree. That's it. So uh, I believe you got the answer uh, size. Uh, and the more important point is not that. The more important point is when you have system as an unbalanced. Probably means I couldn't edit it now this, because it's connected to a balanced bus. But uh, let me. Disconnect it, and I can say, right? Okay. Let me take another source here. Yeah, you have an option to choose unbalance. Okay, that unbalance option is uh, not at all available. Uh, simple reason because we not uh, purchase this uh, unbalanced load flow. I believe. So means what? Say when you give unbalanced, means what? Say instead of here voltage and angle. Uh, this will come with R phase voltage, R phase angle, Y phase voltage, Y phase angle, and B phase voltage, B phase angle. Right. So in that case, I mean uh, the angle is more important because whenever there is a mismatch in the uh, here itself, that means assume that this 110 kV grid is not uh, really balanced. Then uh, of course means uh, there is no point in modeling only the mismatch in the Uh, network uh, that is uh, uh, not balanced uh, network and unbalanced loads. Uh, there is no point in modeling only the unbalanced loads and unbalanced uh, network, but it is im equally important to model the unbalanced source as well. That is possible when you have uh, an unbalanced load flow, right? Uh, since we don't have purchased it, uh, means it's not appearing. But uh, means if you have purchased, this option will enable. When you click this unbalanced button, then you will be able to give R phase voltage, R phase angle, Y phase voltage, Y phase angle, B phase voltage, B phase angle. Yes. Now, uh, hope that answered your uh, question, Sai. Yeah, and I think uh, by means of looking at the questions, yes, uh, uh, I am okay to continue. Probably if you have an energy, so let's have a cut off time every day. So let's make the session like one hour or one and a half hours. Uh, so choice is yours. Uh, you just tell me. Anyway, every Sunday we are going to continue this session. What is your tolerable time? You can put it in the chat box whether it is one hour or one and a half hours. So we can have this session from 10 to 11 or 10 to 11:30. Okay. So that means the remaining questions uh, will be answered in the subsequent sessions. We are not going to miss any questions. And even if we uh, miss miss for any reasons, uh, means I will give you at the end of the session there is an email ID. On that email ID you can very well uh, uh, I mean send the questions. We will, we will definitely take it up. Okay. I uh, means we have decided to take up this sessions uh, in all the upcoming weeks on Sundays at 10 o'clock. Uh, so uh, I thought of also going for other places like Facebook or LinkedIn also to post questions and answer it. So uh, definitely your question will be answered. No worries about it. Okay, there is another question from Sai Sir. Sir, in load flow results, the load bus will have negative voltage angles. Even the infinite bus is modeled at a positive zero. Why? So that I think this question is answered already in one of our session on the part one itself. The real power will always flow from uh, 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 means positive angle to the negative angle, and probably means even if it is zero or five degree here, it is five degree. And even if I put the loads, uh, means you can check the angle. So real power always flow from higher angle to lower angle. So that that's uh, simple. So now it is not negative. It is 2.6. It is uh, 5 degree. So if we make zero here, it is it will become minus 2.6. That's that's obvious. 
So uh, this question, I believe we have answered it in uh, basic load flow class as well as in the SSN part one that has happened last week. That also you can check. Uh, that answered your question. Uh, like uh, means real power will always flow from higher angle to the lower angle. And hence means if you have a generator and if you have a load bus, obviously the load bus angle will be less than the generator bus. That that's uh, simple and straightforward. Yes, I will go to the next question. Uh, that is a question from Muthu Ramesh. How to run load flow for nil condition systems? That's a beautiful question, sir. Yes. Uh, so since you are a professor, I think that question comes from where your x by r of the system is too low or r greater than much much higher than x. That is especially in the radial distribution systems. Uh, unfortunately, means what to say this. Uh, Uh, softwares like ETAP, uh, even I last time I have told, I uh, mean it, it didn't doesn't have the Gauss Seidel method. It has only Newton Raphson and Fasting couple, right? And they have even eliminated this Gauss Seidel method in the latest versions. Okay, so if you have uh, such a query, uh, I mean my answer or suggestion is to go with uh, some simulation software called SimDist. Okay. So this is an exclusive simulation for a uh, distribution system. So means uh, ill-conditioned power system. Uh, Ramesh sir, if you uh, take it, it uh, with uh, uh, means what to say, um, you may be using like forward reverse algorithms etc. in the theory. So if you want uh, some simulations uh, exclusively for a distribution system, which is an ill-conditioned power system, so because of their resistance is higher, then I strongly recommend you to use this simulation software, Dims uh, Simdist. Okay, so that that's an exclusive software. That is an exclusive software for a distribution system. Yes, sir. Hope for a message that answered your question. Yeah, I am going to the next question. Uh, yeah, there is some time lag between because I have to read the questions. Okay, sorry for that. Yes, there is a question for Kanakaraj for load flow analysis. Either ETAP is best or excellent is best. Okay, Kanakaraj, I cannot say ETAP is best or excellent is best. Uh, but I means what to say? ETAP is very user friendly compared to the Dixieland power factoring. But Dixieland technical modeling has a much depth than ETAP. So it is it is all depends upon what you want. Whether you want user friendliness, you want a beautiful uh, 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 GUI, whether you want easy results in the table format, Excel format, easy export, import, etc., etc., then you go with ETAP. If you want, I means if you are a technical guy, I means if you want modeling the equipments in depth, then probably you choose the Excel and Power Factory. And for renewables, I strongly supported Excel and Power Factory. I believe I have answered it. It doesn't mean I am saying the Excel is super than ETAP. I am what I am telling. ETAP has its advantages like user friendliness, GUI, etc. But when it comes to technical model, I believe even ETAP themselves will accept. I mean, so to say, they are not. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, comparable enough with respect to the Excel and Power Factory in the modeling of equipments. I am going to the next question from uh, Devi Sikamani Baskaran. Uh, how to calculate cable losses from AC source and DC source? There is an option you can perform a combined AC DC load flow analysis, uh, Baskaran. You can find out the answer. So there is an option uh, like I mean, for say when you are running a load flow, you can plug both AC and DC load flow analysis, and you can find out the losses in AC and DC sources. That that's possible. And of course, it means you really doesn't need it. Means if you want to find out the losses, you find out only the losses in the AC, and you find separate DC load flow, and you find out the losses in the DC. That that's also sufficient because anyway, you are trying to find out only the losses in that case. All right. That's the answer question from Baskaran. I am going for the next question, Sasi. By neglecting the load loss of the transformer, does it affect the load flow analysis or any consequences? Beautiful question, Sasi. Answer is yes. I mean, so to say, there is a mismatch in the results, which compared to the practical scenario. That means I am performing a load flow analysis, and if I want to benchmark this results with the practical scenario, what's happening in the real time system? That's the purpose of doing all this load flow analysis, right? Why I'm doing load flow analysis? Uh, means I cannot physically, I mean, so to say, uh, check uh, uh, or physically do something and check how much power is flowing, etc. So I am doing this load flow analysis to uh, really mimic what's happening in the real time industry. That's what I am doing. But unfortunately, this uh, 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 means, so to say, because of the mathematical modeling depthness, what is needed, and to simplify the algorithm, uh, they have neglected the no load loss of the transformer in the load flow analysis. But which is not really true. Uh, means. Uh, for in small industries, it may be acceptable, but uh, when you are going for a really large scale grid connected systems, like uh, if you are modeling the entire India or if you are modeling entire Tamil Nadu, 
yes then there will be a small uh, difference between the real time systems and this mismatch so uh, that is uh, a problem because of the modeling depthness what the software has as i told there are few other simulation software has included this load loss and no load loss also for a load, a load flow load loss anyway etap also accounts but uh, this no load loss is not really accounted in etap uh, there are many softwares which are available which accounts other like no load loss also even in etap unbalanced load flow it is accounting so only thing for a normal balanced load flow what is the model most of our uh, engineers may be using that doesn't have that option yes uh, anyway uh, thanks for uh, putting up a beautiful question we also i mean i always uh, say this i mean we need to understand the drawback of the simulation softwares which before we are start using the simulation softwares right right uh, that's to uh, i believe that has answered a question of uh, sasi uh, that is uh, by neglecting the load loss of transformer does it affect the load flow i believe i have answered it the consequence is error the mismatch but this mismatch is not um, significant because you can say the transformer is 99.5 percentage efficiency including the load loss that is only 0.5 percentage loss and uh, i mean in a no load loss that is much much uh, less so there will be small error don't doubt about that but that doesn't have a much significance that's the real reason why still people are using etap and performing load flow right and there is another question from sasi kumara how vector group of a trafo and grounding resistance or reactants will affect an unbalanced load flow analysis that's another beautiful question sasi kumar i am not sure whether you are from an industry or academics but that's really really an interesting question uh, uh, i mean so to say Uh, when we say unbalanced load flow we need to understand uh, uh, three important aspects i believe this we have addressed in one of our uh, uh, course okay uh, one of the course um, uh, that is like uh, when we say unbalanced load flow we have three uh, unbalances one is a source itself can have an unbalance right source itself can have an unbalance that is a grid and of course the generator also can have an unbalance which is not really there uh, but that generator also can have a small unbalance that we need to model in depth and transmission network when you came like a, uh, a long transmission line which is not transposed offer a different uh, impedance or lc parameters for positive negative zero sequence and also for the between the phases right r phase capacitance will not be equal to y phase capacitance which will not be equal to b phase capacitance in a vertical transmission line so if i take a small transmission line yes when the line is not transposed and if i am using a vertical configuration something like this then obviously your capacitance will not be same in r phase y phase and b phase so that is that is a transmission unbalance transmission network unbalance and similarly means what say you might be having a means what say three phase load or a single phase load single phase load connected between two phases etc are possible that is a load unbalance so you need to model all different unbalances like generation unbalance load unbalance network unbalance and you need to really model um, Uh, when you say take an example of lv systems you need to model three end of core cables if you look at beautifully in etap uh, means etap doesn't have three end of core cables at all so why i am telling because uh, means what is the whenever you have a single phase loads the current will return via neutral so that will increase the neutral voltage that affects the performance of other phase voltages but if you look at etap uh, uh, means you may not be able to find the three end of core cables at all right uh, rather than going for that i mean so to say if you look at the bus etap doesn't have option for a four bus uh, four wire uh, system etap has three phase a single phase two wire and single phase three wire that means etap really not model the three phase four wire system which is mandatory for an unbalanced load flow hope you got it what i'm trying to say in a low voltage systems uh, means so to say it's a three phase four wire systems or y b and neutral is there so means i have to run 3.5 core cable or a four core cable and when there is a single phase load connected there will be a current through this neutral which will be flowing and that means what is this will create a neutral voltage etc etc so in that case it's really important to have all that so means uh, just trying to say i means even in unbalanced load flow also if you buy etap is not going to really depthly model uh, the systems if you compare that with uh, uh it has a ridiculous and power factory so you have an option you have an option i mean so i am not really going much on the uh, dixelent which i thought of taking it bit later many people also told i mean so why not uh, no videos on dixelent i am not giving a partiality for dixelent definitely we are going to come up with the dixelent but you can see there are different uh, types of buses what you can model it in uh, dixelent power factory 
you can model three phase three wire you can model three phase four wire you can model two phase with the neutral two phase single phase with the neutral only neutral bus all these things are all these things are possible so that that's an advantage of uh, 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 dixel and power factory so what i'm trying to say uh, that's where the modeling difference comes in that's that's what the modeling difference comes in so means we need to really understand uh, the depthness of the model also okay so in etap the biggest drawback what you have understood even if you perform an unbalanced low flow that's not going to give you a true unbalance simple reason because the software doesn't have the capability to model a three phase four wire bus then the software doesn't have the capability to model a uh, three and a half core cable or a uh, four core cable i mean four core cable is it's available but uh, when you don't have a fourth wire in the bus then what is the point in modeling a four uh, four core cable right so if you look at this it means you don't have any 3 and 1/2 core cables if you look at here you can see i am not sure whether it is visible or not but if you look at we can go back to etap and check a single core two core three core four core five core cable so it is it is absolutely uh, uh, means what to say not possible to model 3 and 1/2 core cables which is predominant in the low voltage systems so then if you are performing an unbalanced load flow in a low voltage system then uh, what is the results which you are going to get is also not right but i believe still i have not answered your question that's a beautiful question i am i am touching quite a lot uh, yes uh, but uh, to answer your question of uh, i'm sorry i forget the name also sasi kumar okay beautiful question sasi kumar i mean so to say when you have this um, delta star grounded transformer when there is a zero sequence that will be i mean so to say eliminated by this delta side of the transformer so vector group plays a critical role Uh, and of course it's the grounding resistance even your 3 and 1/2 core cable or a 4 core cable whether it is a 5 core cable or is it a double neutral there is a many many things which has to be modeled in depth unfortunately as on today we don't have a uh, etap to perform this okay since i am talking about etap i am telling this but i mean that's where the research also has to go on i mean nowadays uh, there are quite lot of distributed sources are coming in right i mean everybody is allowed to put up rooftop solar everybody is still ready to uh, put up the rooftop wind turbine generators and it is a bidirectional meter so in this case unbalance is going to further increase in this case it is really mandated to model this unbalanced low flow in detail that time probably what is the mechanism which is available in etap is not really sufficient that's where probably the young dynamic people like you how to i mean find out the ways and means uh, beyond what is available in the simulation software or this the feedback has to reach that uh, developers and they have to update their software yes There is a question from Kanagraj. Design of battery charge controller is available in ETAP or Excel? Yes, it is uh, available. They are telling. I don't want to comment much on that, <laughs> Kanagraj. Okay, uh, Excel, you can write. Uh, I mean, codes to develop this algorithms. So okay, anyway, that's not really related to low flow, but that that's available. And ETAP, they had came up with a webinar which is available in their uh, ETAP resources website. Uh, you can just go and you can check. Uh, I mean, so what is it? What's the capability which they themselves claim? But I request you to validate it. Okay, if you go to ETAP website, there is. Uh, I mean, so whatever maybe the uh, webinars which they have done that will be available. You can you can really check that. So I think my software is a bit slow. Yes, if you go to support. Yeah, you might be having uh, technical tutorials and resource centers. In resource centers, you can find out uh, the latest videos which they have. Right. So there are quite a lot of uh, videos and webinars which they have done. That that will be available in uh, technical tutorials and webinars, seminars, right? Yeah. Recent webinars which will be available. So recently they have done one of the session on this. Um, microgrid management uh, and battery energy storage which you can watch but i request you to validate this okay don't believe what the uh, uh, developers are telling every developer will promote their product it is a, uh, justification and as an engineer we need to take a call what is available and what is not available yes i believe that answer your question kanakraj and there is a question from naresh uh, let's say conductor resistance is okay i think this is relevant to the resistance value for a positive and negative uh, sequence yes uh, thanks naresh probably means to say uh, someone can take up this question and uh, they can really uh, means find out the values uh, okay uh, they can validate it uh, probably you can send the question we can also uh, probably the answer it, answer the questions uh, means what to say i also personally don't want this session to go as just a theory of what we are boring with i want some manual calculation some simulation some theoretical understanding i personally strongly believe uh, uh, what do you say uh, power system analysis is what exactly connecting the theoretical aspects with the real time scenario 
so we will we will uh, means you send the questions we will try to uh, means for see do some manual calculations or with some simulations and we will send you the answer narrates and we will take up that in the in the next sessions right i think both the both the questions can be answered uh, that's another question also from naris how to calculate positive negative zero sequence components i believe this has been answered already in our uh, session uh, one itself for part one on the load flow analysis uh, uh, which is there in our video i believe uh, if you have watched that you might have got it so advanced about some simulation software part one uh, means you can you you find out the answer for that question how to find out the rx and p and manually if you want you have uh, many textbooks like a transmission and distribution and uh, i think uh, you can find out the line parameters and you can find it out there is a question from sandeep um, for a given substation if i want to propose a reactive power compensation device like the capacitor bank or a dynamic compensation like can we do load flow analysis uh, okay so if you want a fixed reactive power compensation load flow is sufficient uh, sandeep but if you want to go with the dynamic compensation like svc then it is not really uh, i mean so to say svc is a dynamic device right it is dynamic reactive power compensation load flow analysis is basically you can understand uh, load flow analysis is uh, steady state analysis so absolutely it is uh, it is not uh, right uh, to identify or find out the svc rating with uh, from uh, uh, from load flow analysis yeah i believe uh, i mean so i have asked the question whether shall we keep the cut off time as 11 or 11:30 so uh, i have not really looked at the answers uh, please uh, give me your answer like uh, shall we have uh, only one has answered 10 to 11:30 and i am expecting a quite lot of answers so that uh, i mean so say we can decide whether we have one hour session because it is a question and answer session so means questions will be from a different area people may not be able to understand or digest all the answers from me so it is a choice is yours uh, this we are going to continue as i told uh, um, uh, every sunday 10 am sharp 10 am we will be having this session next sunday also join us on the same youtube channel but if you give me a time shall we have 1 hour 30 minutes or 1 hour then then i will i will take a call from the next week accordingly okay so this week uh, i might be maybe going for a, a few more uh, sessions a few more time right and i will take up the questions uh, but uh, yeah if i get answers yeah one hour 30 minutes yeah fine fine 10 to 11 30 is fine for most of the people i think yeah yeah fine fine i will i we will try to follow the same thing yeah thank you so that means still we have 20 more minutes right yeah i will take up another question uh, that's question from again kanagraj for simulating real time system for a residential load flow how to feed the cable data for 440 volt uh, that is uh, simple and straightforward uh, kanagraj i am not sure whether you have worked with the ctap or not you can just put a 14 volt bus and you can uh, straight away model uh, so i am just putting a 0.415 kv that is uh, 14 volt right you might be having a, a 1.1 kv grid cable or 600 volt grid cable and you can directly model you can give a length you can give how many runs per phase whether it is two runs or three runs or a single run and you can choose uh, means what's the voltage right you might be having a different voltage rates right? like 0.5 kv 0.6 kv 1 kv so uh, so you can choose whatever the voltage grid if it is an iec then it is 1 kv grid which you can choose and you can probably select the insulation material whether it is an xlp or rubber nobody is using rubber nowadays and frequency also you can check whether it is a 50 hertz or 60 hertz and you can choose aluminum cable or a copper cable and you can choose this square amount what you want right so now if you look at i have selected a uh, xlp right uh, means so to say four core copper cable of 300 square mm cable so that's that's a very simple answer which you can see here right it's a four core cable 300 square mm cable so modeling is easy i believe you might be new to etap and uh, again we uh, you can go back to the transmission line modeling the very first video of our uh, youtube uh, means long long back uh, not long back uh, maybe <laughs> two months old right so i believe uh, means if you look at this transmission line modeling we we have answered that question of how to model the cable also that's to answer a question from kanakaraj yeah and uh, there is a question from himan so on earthmat design yes earthmat design uh, it's a separate topic we will definitely come back to earthmat design himan so we will we will answer that question and uh, there is uh, yeah trimurthy nagaraj yes uh, trimurthy from avankade at times the low flow is not converging even with the, min with the minimum number of nodes but it's happening after changing the length of the cable slightly is it normal oh that that's a good question uh, trimurthy probably means what we will be able to also take up some simulation uh, something like this 
so that uh, low flow convergence might be because of uh, many factors i mean uh, somebody like uh, uh, i mean what to say instead of modeling this 20 mva transformer they might be modeling as a 20 kva because they might not see i mean whether it is a kva or mva so sometimes it might be in kva and people tend to model it like a 20 kva so they are presume that it is 20 mva but they have really modeled as a 20 kva but the transformer is 10 mva and when they try to model run the load flow then load flow may not converge so some errors will come so most of the errors people might be facing is uh, uh, didn't converge is because of this uh, rating kva mv error that you need to check second important thing what you need to check is your sunt compensation devices like sunt capacitor or sunt reactor again you have given a huge value or a huge uh, ultra low value and the cables i mean so it's really important to check what is your susceptance value which you are giving these are some simple tactics which you need to check okay beyond that there are some numerical errors which may be possible like i mean so to say uh, uh, even sophisticated software fails to converge the load flow if you have um, very large voltage with a very long transmission line it is associated with a very short uh, transmission line like if you model a 300 kilometer line and the next to that if you model a point to one kilometer line then means probably one value is too large and other one value is too low so probably means you may be of um, uh, uh, knowing like this jacobian matrix z bus uh, impedance matrix etc so that that's a numerical problem which we need to solve so means you should not use a uh, extra high voltage to ultra low voltage uh, in a single systems okay and so means what's the problem which you have faced from your understanding when you are changing the cable length it is uh, running it's uh, it's a numerical problem okay right uh, so uh, that's an interesting case study uh, means sometimes like a, a 10 meter cable it will not run but uh, at 5 meter also it will run 15 meter also it will run so these are some numerical problems which the software has so in that case you try different uh, methods like if you are uh, working in a uh, gauss settle you go to newton option or a fast coupled or adaptive newton option and you can try yeah. so that that's basically a new uh, that's basically a numerical problem, but you may not face that in a quite uh, quite frequently. That's the rare of that case. Yes. That's a question from Naris. Uh, kindly show us the solar generation model like uh, solar panel inverter and inverter duty transformer and further connected to grid in ETAP to run load flow. Okay, inverter duty transformer, there is nothing specific called inverter duty transformer, Naris. Uh, the solar and wind, uh, I mean, so say you might have seen one of our video on wind from... Uh, that we have done for some of the college you might be seeing some uh, yeah wind energy conversion systems part one two three similarly we thought of uh, coming for a solar solar we have done quite a lot of videos on uh, pv system uh, but i mean so to say uh, this is a bit lengthy topic if i start now i may not be able to finish it so we will uh, come up with a dedicative uh, modeling of solar uh, uh, inverters and wind turbine generators in a separate session okay that uh, uh, means we are discussing with a few uh, academic institutions uh, so uh, definitely we will we'll come up with that session so well within this uh, 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 means july or at max before august 15 uh, hope uh, that helps you raise okay then there's a question from sois uh, how does this cable reactive and capacitive losses affect the power triangle of a network uh, can you give an explanation yeah uh, so uh, i mean cable reactance and uh, this again i believe this question is perfectly answered in our transmission line modeling uh, you can uh, very well check uh, that uh, science please refer this uh, uh, transmission line modeling part one uh, definitely that helps you to uh, answer that question uh, but still if you have any uh, issues uh, specifically you can come back but power triangle remains a power triangle p and q then that uh, decides say yes, apparent power so there is no impact on power triangle power triangle remains power triangle but what is the impact of this reactance uh, and capacitance and what is ferranti effect what is surge impedance loading what is ferranti effect and uh, what's the impact of cable on ferranti effect What's the reactive power injected by these cables? All these questions are uh, being answered in our transmission line modeling one, and also a yeah, uh, small extent in this advanced power system simulation software. So hope that that helps you size to answer your question. And there is a question from Naresh. Uh, kindly show us the wind generation. I believe this this I have told already. Uh, I mean, so to say, we have three sessions uh, Naresh, which you can watch that gives you an approximate idea of what is wind turbine generated and how it is to be modeled. But definitely we will. Uh, means come up with uh, much more simulations on wind and solar in ETAP, ETAP and Excel and Perfect. We assure you that that happens within this month or at max before 15,000. Right. Okay. 
paint okay kanagar has sim the cc free software or paint and no it is not a free software i mean almost all the softwares what we are seeing here is not a free software it's a paid software but you will get a demo version of that uh, all the softwares what we are talking about and if you are a student it means even etap now came up with after quite a lot of struggle etap came up with a student version right I means etap previously doesn't have a student version at all now we tap uh, comes with a uh, student version so that that you can buy similarly means in this you can get a demo and uh, for a students benefit i can say this excellent power factory comes up with a student version of 150 euros it is really worth investing i, I, I can tell that much if you want to make your career and if you are a student or if you are a professor and if you want to learn power systems and you want to convert your career into the core uh, i mean spending 150 euros for a student license of excellent power factory is worth worth investing that much i can say and of course i am not a promoter of dixelent but uh, the technical deftness i am telling okay i am not going to get any money for, from dixelent for promoting dixelent yes uh, arun kumar uh, there is a question like when is the loading uh, set to be unbalanced i mean what should be the minimum difference among the load currents between the phase to say the load is unbalanced there is no reference something like that if you can connect even a single phase loads right uh, so that means uh, only r phase has a load and y and b is zero so at an aggregated level i mean so in lv systems we generally give uh, the earth fault pickup as 20 percentage if you are a production engineer or if you have studied uh, something on the production in a low voltage systems so, so earth fault pickup we generally give as a 20 percentage and hence uh, means your unbalance uh, has to be I minimized mean, less than 20 percentage i mean ideally it should be less than it's ideally it should be zero uh, means maybe 5 percentage is allowed but if higher you are going then it is creating quite a lot of issues so but at least you need to ensure that i mean uh, to prevent the mal operation of the relay this is less than 20 percentage hope that answer your question arun kumar and there is a question from aruna mekala what's the difference between etap and matlab and i believe you are a student aruna it's a good question uh, few of our simulation software has answered that uh, etap is basically exclusive power system simulation software that is used only for load flow short circuit motor starting relay coordination or flash harmonic analysis etc it is an exclusive power system simulation software and i believe it means we have also posted a list of power system simulation softwares when gunasekhar ask we have shared some link at the beginning so you can check what what are the power system simulation softwares are available uh, matlab uh, means it is not a power system simulation software it is a generic tool it can be used for many things it can be also used for a power system simulation so if you have decided to perform power system simulation i recommend uh, power system simulation software than matlab rather than going for a matlab i am not promoting etap or excellent or skm or bssc you can go with any power system simulation software rather than going with the matlab because matlab is a generic software uh, what's the difference between power world and uh, etap yes uh, i think rama prabha madam from academics i think they have a power world simulation software that like, i think another software with the 14 bus you will get it free and that is uh, thanks for uh, telling madam there is software called power world to be very frank this is software uh, is uh, developed by an academician in a college to teach the power system simulation in a better way okay so the software the students are available demo software is available with the 14 buses you can you can uh, download that and you can practice it. so logically for a load flow analysis and short circuit analysis i mean all these softwares are same only things here and there there is an options which will change uh, but uh, means what to say there are some good options and uh, features are available in power world simulation software also so means from students if you are not able to get this uh, demo version of this etap then you can very well go with the uh, uh, power world that nothing wrong with that uh, you can very well go with uh, power world madam and even probably for a transient stability and their animation is like uh, beautiful uh, like uh, so uh, you can you can see here the generator how it is model even when there is an angle of 30 degree this bone will rotate so that that's an ideal tool which you can uh, really think of and that has quite lot of many other capabilities we will we will discuss this simulation software in a later dates uh, so that i can take up a separate session for this power world yes uh, uh, there's a question from ravi uh, uh, explain about the reverse power flow effect on transformer ideally the transformers are bidirectional devices so there will not be any thermal impact on the transformer on um, uh, because of the reverse power uh, means if it is a generator yes the reverse power has an impact but uh, reverse power doesn't have any impact on transformer but only thing i mean sort of say your on load tap changes uh, in regulating the voltages there could be some uh, issues which may arise 
but that has to be handled uh, intelligently in your automatic voltage regulator but apart from that uh, i don't see any issues when there is a reverse power in the transformer but if your question is with respect to the utilities some norms standards regulations that is uh, different if your question is specific to transformer transformer is a bidirectional device and which uh, probably means if i go back to some of our video yeah if you look at this generator generator step of transformer here if you are able to see uh, means what to say uh, before the generator is on probably you will be reverse feeding it from uh, correct no that is uh, back feeding this generator step of transformer and you will be loading it so transformer is a bidirectional device and power flow in both the directions are absolutely possible without any impact on the uh, transformer okay hope uh, that answers your question uh, ravi there is a question from sasi kumara if i have multiple slack bus in the system how power drawn from different slack bus also based on which slack bus my angle will be so means what is it sasi kumara your question is very valid for that you need to perform a system and you have to analyze you can model a multiple slack bus swing bus with a voltage and angle so means what is the voltage you can give a different voltage and different angle for a different slack bus so based on your voltage uh, means reactive power will flow will be decided and based on the based on the uh, what do you say uh, your angle the real power will be decided so two two really important things uh, so you have you can have multiple slack bus only you can understand this when you are modeling a large systems if you have multiple slack bus based on their voltage and their angle the power flow will be controlled but modeling such a systems is uh, really bit tricky that means you will be able to get only when you only when you perform okay and i think there are people are asking questions about the feedback form yes feedback form is available i am not denying it sunday people are coming and uh, at morning 10 o'clock and spending one and a half hours we have also decided to distribute the certificates so we will share this uh, feedback form right now you can take that feedback form that is a feedback form of the uh, i mean so to say which you can fill it but you will not get a certificate uh, for only this session your feedback is most welcome but uh, i mean we will give you the certificate if you are attending continuously or even with some interruption at least for um, at least for uh, five sessions okay feedback form link i am sharing it in the chat box uh, which is there that's the feedback form which you can fill please don't expect the certificate for only one session no we appreciate your time uh, but uh, means we expect you to attend at least five sessions then definitely you will, you will get the you will get the certificate right i think that answered your question yes uh, and i think there are quite a lot of other questions also which are listed out yes uh, thanks a lot for quite a lot of questions uh, maybe i have uh, uh, means so to say i have uh, 10 more minutes i will try to take up maybe one or two questions more then i will wind up my sessions but i will assure you that all other questions will be definitely answered right so sikumar we will we will discuss this question on the multiple slack bus probably in a large systems probably we have 2000 bus systems so we will try to do something on simulations and we will come up with a much better answer okay uh, but you can also try on your own uh, because that is only when you model your big system and you put uh, different slack buses with a different angles you can understand that yes uh, but definitely we will come up with some simulation results in the upcoming sessions uh, thanks thanks sikumar for putting a beautiful question Yeah, there is a question from Sai Abdullah. Is it not enough to carry neutral current by a four core cable in the Middle East? Four wire system, they prefer four core cable only. In India, we prefer three point five core. No, uh, so three point five core or um, uh, four core, it is absolutely depends upon what's the current which is flowing in the neutral. Uh, so that's that's the. Um, I mean, if the current flowing to the neutral is half of uh, or less than the half of uh, the phase current, then three point five core cable is, is okay. but still as i told it means when the current is returning through the neutral there will be a shift in the neutral voltage that that you need to always uh, think of so i mean middle east has uh, enough money and if you are from uh, middle east is like uh, if you are designing the system absolutely from middle east then probably cost is not a factor right it means india means we know what is the earthing material which you use but middle east you use copper for that thing so they have enough money so uh, means they are going with the four core cables so in india means we always uh, i mean economic perspective we look at go with the 3.5 core but 3.5 core is not really suitable when your uh, current in the neutral exceeds uh, uh, means 50 percentage of the phase current and also you need to make another important note uh, this uh, reduction in the neutral increases the voltage drop along the neutral that's, that's another fact which you need to 
really look into. And uh, I mean, so you may appreciate the fact that less than 25 square mm cable, you will not get um, uh, three and a half core cables because that's not economically viable to have. Uh, I mean, so it's a less than 25 square mm cable is a three and a half core cable. So this three and a half core cable will be available only about 25 square mm. Yes. And how to model a synchronous machine? There is a question from Naresh Raju. Uh, how to model synchronous machine and induction machine for pumped storage? Okay, pumped storage, you cannot really model it in NeatApp, uh, Naresh. Uh, so you can not model, uh, but uh, what do you say? You can uh, model one generator and other motor at the same bus. And when you are operating in a generating mode, you switch on the generator. And when you are operating it as a pumped mode, you switch on the motor. That, that's how you have to model the pumped hydro plants. Because anyway, means uh, the generator, pumped hydro generator will not model, uh, means operate in both uh, generating mode and uh, pump mode together at the same time. So we generally request you to, uh, uh, means model as both generator one and uh, means the same bus, you connect a generator as well as a motor and switch on the generator when it is in generating mode and uh, operate it in a motor and in a pumping mode. Yes, I think there are quite a quite lot of questions which are flying. Uh, research scholar is missing. That is a question uh, uh, which is there. Yeah. Okay, Kanagraj, I believe you are a research scholar. I understood. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Kanagraj. You can fill it as a student by this time. Okay. But from next time, we ensure that we are adding a research scholar. Okay. Probably we have not really. Means, uh, I think this is third time I am missing the research scholars. Probably from my mind, it's only students and uh, faculties and then industry comes in. But uh, definitely next time we will add research scholars separately. But this time, okay, kindly add comment options in form. So sorry, okay, Nahari Bari Hapla. Okay, 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 fine. Uh, probably means what to say, we edit uh, this form. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we thought of giving that. Uh, I mean, uh, in Nahari Bari, I have created uh, about five minutes back, so I have missed it. Uh, Okay. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so we will we will ensure that I mean, so to say, you are uh, you are coming to section, which is that's the real reason why collecting the feedback form, right? <laughs> there is no point in the having a feedback form without anything. So that that's uh, fine. Uh, definitely, next time we will add that uh, option, or we will do that. Okay, we will answer all these questions, but uh, maybe last few more minutes, I will take up only one important information to you all. Uh, that is, uh, we are coming up with uh, one important. Uh, uh, there are many requests from the students. Uh, so may, let me take maybe only two or three minutes more. Okay. We came up with uh, some important aspects. I mean, many students are asking, uh, I mean, so internship, internship, etc. That's also a real reason why I have planned for, uh, uh, I have planned for uh, internship. This is session also exclusively for students. We are coming up with an internship exclusively for our students. That means uh, there are students, UG, PG, and even research scholars and of course the faculties also they can want they can attend what we are going to cover we are going to cover lighting design that is using dialex we are going to cover pv plant design that is uh, from the manufacturing perspective as well as from the um, as well as from the um, pv system uh, software using pv system simulation software that that we are planning and microgrids wind energy electric vehicles all these things approximately we are planning for about, uh, uh, I mean, total duration of about at least 60 hours, at least 60 hours. And uh, I means the eligibility is like a BE, BTEC. Uh, I mean, I prefer only triple E students. I will not recommend for ECE. But if you're an ME, MTech, Power System, Power Engineering Management, Machines, Power Electronics, Control System, it's an ideal fit. And of course, if you're a research scholar, still, if you want to learn this, uh, it's, it's really worth of it. This is basically try to enhance the employability of the students. And the prerequisite is a laptop with a stable uh, stable internet access. So if you have a laptop and the stable internet access, and if you fall below this, and even if you're a professor, as to, uh, means if you want to learn this, if you want to become as a student, yes. So it means what is it? We we uh, off, we start the course on 20th July, and the course fees. Uh, this is exclusively for a student. So uh, I means uh, uh, the course fees is uh, 3000 plus 540. Oh, I'm I'm sharing the link for uh, registering. If you want to register for this, so you can very well register. Where we cover dialex, that is indoor and outdoor lighting design using dialex. We cover PV plant from the inverter manufacturing, solar panel manufacturing, and of course from the PV solar plant grid connected and standalone using PV simulation software. For a microgrid, we go with an energy storage, and uh, that is using simulation software like Homer Pro, Homer Grid. 
wind energy uh, in detail and electric vehicles and of course in addition to that all this uh, we look at from the power system study perspective also using ETAP and Excel and Power Factory. We planned basically this course for a 60 hours and I am sure that uh, definitely go beyond 60 hours. So uh, this is for the students, the research scholars and of course if the faculties wants they can join. The fees is 3000 plus 540. Uh, GST that is 3540 and I think uh, the registration form has been shared uh, that you can check it in the chat box and uh, if you want to register you can you can very well register it and uh, today and tomorrow uh, uh, means what is it uh, we are giving uh, for the first 25 participants we are giving at uh, the cost of 2500 including GST uh, at a cost of 2500 including GST so if you fill it Today and tomorrow, and if you make the payments before tomorrow, uh, we are we are uh, I mean, so say giving an option for the peoples those who are joining today. And if you fill it, uh, because we have not really circulated this, uh, still we are fine tuning uh, the uh, posters and everything. And this will be out only after Tuesday for an official forum. Uh, but uh, means the peoples those who are attending this can use this benefit. And if you are filling it, you can register it at uh, uh, at a cost of two thousand five hundred, including GST. Right. So there we cover lighting design using indoor and outdoor lighting design using Dialux. We cover solar plant design grid connected and standalone using TV assist, microgrid design and battery energy storage using Homer Pro and Homer Grid, wind energy conversion system, electric vehicles, all even including from the power system perspective of uh, ETAP and Excel and Power Factory. I believe we can put in another image as well. So there are about uh, seven simulation softwares, I believe, which is visible for you. These are the simulation software which we cover. Homer Pro, Homer Grid and Reap, that is for microgrids and solar. PVSys, that is exclusively for solar. Dialux, uh, that is for lighting design. ETAF, and of course, uh, means we had to update Dixel and Power Factory, which we, we will doing it. That's why I told uh, the poster is not completely ready. So, ETAF and Dixel and Power Factory, which you can uh, register. So, we have planned for about 20 different speakers, and it starts on 20th July. And the timing, if you look at, uh, I believe I am not sure whether it is visible or not. Let me try to zoom it. Yeah, timing is like uh, 10 to 12.30 on uh, Monday to Saturday. And we uh, call it a doubt clearing session or whatever you call it. That is uh, evening, every day, evening 7 to 8. I mean, this is an action course. If you don't want to take, that's the real reason we, you, we told uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, really important uh, uh, to have a laptop and internet connectivity. You have to work on the simulation software. Um, uh, so, I mean, if you are really ready to put efforts to learn along with us, then then probably you can you can uh, uh, I mean, so you can register for this course. Okay. So this is what we cover: microgrids, indoor and outdoor lighting design, that is in upgrade connected and uh, solar. EVs, wind energy, introduction to power system simulation software, including ETAP and Excel and Power Factory. So that that's what we cover. So that's that's a quick introduction of uh, uh, what is what is uh, what we have with available. And I think there are quite a lot of quite a lot of questions. Uh, um, yes, uh, uh, and I'm uh, sure uh, this one and a half hours might be sufficient on uh, every every Sunday. You can, I mean, we are going to post it in our uh, other uh, tools also, like um, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, everywhere. Okay, this will be live only today in uh, YouTube, but uh, definitely we are going to come up with uh, YouTube as well as uh, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook live, which are going to come. And you can keep posting this question uh, hashtag with Ask Selva, you can find it uh, wherever you want. Right, that's it from my end. And uh, if you have any questions, I don't uh, have my slides, but let me try to open any of the slides which I might have. So that that's a contact number which you can. Yeah. So far, at least we have done um, about 25 online programs for academic institutions on the last. Uh, last from start from april 1st right when the lockdown starts we have done about 25 programs and this is our contact number which will be available in everywhere like uh, you can find it uh, means if you have any questions uh, uh, means what is it, you can feel free to write uh, to this uh, email id or to this uh, contact number right we are available in whatsapp telegram everything and you can follow our all uh, social media channels like youtube facebook instagram linkedin and uh, 
tag us wherever you want and post the questions uh, definitely all your questions will be answered and the feedback form we have already shared and the feedback form is mandatory uh, for the people those who expect a certificate from us right as i told uh, certificate will not be available for uh, all the people those who have filled uh, today's feedback it means you need to wait for at least five sessions i mean once we uh, i mean once we get to your uh, feedback for from five sessions then uh, then we will i mean once we release the certificate for you right you will you will get the certificate and even the people those who are continuously joining uh, on this ask silva questions uh, definitely you will get uh, uh, some benefits uh, definitely we ensure that uh, means we are accommodating that for the possible in the upcoming programs and thanks a lot for joining us for the one and a half hours i believe you have enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed it uh, sorry we have not really given the feedback form link about the comments so you post it in the uh, comments uh, in the chat box of uh, uh, what's the feedback right even after the video is over you can probably post your comments thanks a lot uh, thanks for joining have a nice uh, sunday we will meet again on uh, next sunday at 10 am thank you have a nice day thank you